we're doing a series about the house uh, because I believe that uh, a lot of us have been through COVID, you know, been through these past 18 months. We just need to refocus on what this church is about. And to know the heart of the house, To have a heart for the house, we need to know the heart of the house. So we've been doing a series on matters that matter in your life. Covered, today's the last one, but uh, for the last two Sundays we've been covering four. On a Sunday, I'm just going to recap them very quickly. Doing this so that we can, those of us that have been here for many years can be reminded about them. And uh, for those of you that may be new, can be informed about what the DNA of this church is as we slowly get back to some levels of normality. I don't think we're there yet. I think there's still going to be a couple of stop and goes along the way. But praise God we are. I think it is getting better. All right. Matters that matter. First one was faith. Faith matters. Genuine, sincere faith matters at New Life Church. We're not a social club. We are followers and disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Family matters. Family God's way matters. Morality. We do not get our moral compass from the United Nations or from Hollywood or from DSTV. We get it from the Bible. People matter. Money matters. Manners matter. Actually, I got a, a, someone contacted me this week and just said, thank you for sharing on manners last week. They want to be part of a church that has manners. And guess what? Manners get taught at home. But we're serious about our manners. I mean, as I said last week, please and thank you. Nobody owes us anything. I, I have a problem. Because with the technology of today, because of my eyes, my poor eyesight, I, I'm using Siri more and more. Because she can read my, my WhatsApp. She can read my texts that come in. Amazing. Fascinating. <laughs> Some of the technology of today really is a big help. But my mother and father drummed into me. In fact, we wouldn't get food if you didn't say please. And you got a clip on the head if you didn't say thank you. So when I asked Siri for the weather, what's the weather tomorrow? You know, hey Siri, what's the weather tomorrow? And she gives me the whole, all the wind speed and temperature and the rain and blah, blah, blah. I say thank you. And then I look around and see if anybody's watching because I feel stupid <laughs> because I'm speaking to a computer. That's how it was drilled into me. You say thank you for everything you get. So, man is matter here. People, and, uh, people matter, money matters, uh, manners, and serving matters, and our purposes of reaching, restoring, enriching, and releasing. So, let's go on to the last four today. Uh, number nine, values matter. Purposes are what we believe uh, God wants us to do here at New Life. Our values are how we go about doing our purposes, fulfilling them. And it's an acrostic of life, L-I-F-E, our values. Love, integrity, faithfulness, and excellence. Love because Christianity cut it open. At the heart of Christianity is love. God is love. You and I were created in the image and the likeness of God. If we have no love, Paul says, our faith is worthless. It's all about love. That's why our mission statement at New Life Church is to love people into a relationship with God. Help them to live our lives in line, in, in, in according to the Word of God and in line with, in step with the Holy Spirit, in line with God's Word, in step with His Holy Spirit. But we love people into a relationship with God. I heard a story this week that just makes my toes want to curl of a woman that came to church. She, she was battling with alcohol. She came to church because she wanted to get her, her relationship right with God. She came to church, small church, and 
before she got to the door of the church, she heard two women, the one saying to the other one, how long is that alcoholic still going to be with us? She turned around, got in her car, and people say she never put her foot in the the church again. I don't want to be part of a church like that. Andy Stanley says, nothing says hypocrite faster than a Christian expecting a non-Christian to behave like Christians when half the Christians don't act like it half the time. He goes on to say, the more conscious I am of the work that God still has to do in me, the less critical I am about what God still has to do in you. Integrity, the I in life, integrity, Webster's Dictionary says it's uh, integrity, uh, it defines it as adherence to uh, moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character. Ethical principles are not flexible. God did not give us the 10 suggestions, they are the 10 commandments. Proverbs says that the Lord detests those with twisted or with perverse hearts, but he delights in those who have integrity. Now, if we cut up the word integrity, if we, if we really just put it under a microscope, we're going to find within its character honesty, righteousness, trust, incorruptibility. Doing, doing the right thing even if people will never find out or know. Thirdly, the F in faithfulness, it stands for faithfulness as believers. We should be faithful to God. In fact, the Bible teaches us in Psalms, it says that we must, be, we must uh, obey or keep the vows that we make to the Most High. Faithful to God, faithful to our family, faithful to our spouse, faithful to the promises, the vows we made before God matters. Faithful to raise our children as God would have us, teach them to honor and to obey you. If they don't honor and respect you, how on earth are they going to honor and respect God? Moving on. Um, But faithful to protect them, to love them, to care for them. Faithful to the church. If you're a partner in fellowship here, faithful to, if, if you believe really this is where God has planted you, then faithful to the meetings, faithful to, to grow, faithful to generosity, faithful to tithing, faithful to serving. Faithfulness um, is simply sticking to what we promised, uh, even though it hurts sometimes. And number four, the E, it stands for excellence. Never forget, average is the enemy of excellence. And Jesus Christ did not live an average life. He is our mentor. He lived a life of excellence. Excellence honors God. Excellence inspires people. If you go to a restaurant that is filthy, that is dirty, where the staff are rude, staff are unkind, furniture is broken, I'm not going back. It's the same with church. Why would people want to come back? They come back to a place that's where the people are rude, where the people are unkind, where the furniture is broken, dirty, grimy. So we need to pursue excellence in everything about the church. The world at its worst. The world at its worst needs the church at its best. And then, number 10, social justice matters at New Life. Now, I've asked Samantha to share on social justice. She is, let me get her title right, she is the operations and educational officer at New Life, at, at Heart to Heart, and uh, I asked her to share. She can't be here today, so uh, we videoed her, so let's just watch. And I asked her the question, why does social justice matter? Thanks, guys. Hi, my name is Samantha Busak, and I work for a non-profit organization called Heart to Heart, and we are also the social justice arm of New Life Church. We basically focus on orphan and vulnerable children and families in need, and our mission is to restore hope within the communities of Muscle Bay. 
So why do we do social justice? The Bible clearly states in Romans 12 verse 13, it says, take a constant interest in God's beloved people and do so by helping them. This verse is so profound to me that I'd actually like to break it up into three parts. Part one, take a constant interest. At Heart to Heart, we don't just help people when it's convenient. We do so because there's a need to help people in the community and we do so by establishing relationships. We also don't help to create dependency. We help to see our fellow brothers and sisters grow from their circumstances. Part two is in the needs of God's beloved people. As we sit here today, we are all God's children, His beloved people. We sit here with different circumstances and we have different needs. And some of the needs that we as Heart to Heart help with in the community is food relief, material support such as clothing, blankets, toiletries, and especially to families who have lost their homes, the shacks have burned down, so we provide household items that is donated to Heart to Heart, as well as baby hampers to mothers who's in need, and we also provide counselling. Earlier this year, a teenage girl reached out to Heart to Heart because she was in need of some information and just some guidance, and we were able to provide that to her. A few months after that, she reported back to us and said that she was now pregnant while she's in school. She was faced with a very tough decision whether to reject the baby or to be rejected by her very own family. And her mind was basically made up and after some counselling and giving her just some guidance, she was able to make an informed decision and rather a positive decision to keep the baby. Fast forward a few weeks, she found out that she was HIV positive and she was basically determined to give up the baby for adoption as she believed that there would be a family would be able to take better care of the child than what she and the boyfriend would be able to do so. Well, not long after that, Pastor Zane called us in for a meeting and he shared the news that New Life Church would like to um, sponsor food parcels for families in need for the next three months. Our hearts were filled with joy because this was an answer to prayer. This now meant that we could provide a food parcel to this family for the next three months and they would be able to use their food money to cater to the needs of the baby. And I think it's just so amazing how the decision of one person to help someone else could actually impact and change the direction for one full family. And then the third and the last part is respond by helping them. I think helping other people is a form of serving God. It says in Matthew 25 from verse 31 to 40, um, the story where Jesus shares how the king will one day come and he would separate us as people like he would with sheep and with goats. And then he would say to the people on the right hand side that, and let me just read it. He'd say that, for when you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you found me thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I had no place to stay, you invited me in. And when I was poorly clothed, you covered me. When I was sick, you tenderly cared for me. And when I was in prison, you visited me. And the righteous people look at God and they question and they ask, but why, when God, when did we feed you? When did we give you something to drink? When did we clothe you? And he responds to them and he says, for when you cared for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you demonstrated love and you helped me. Well, we can all help and we can all make a difference against injustice. We don't need thousands of friends to be able to help people in our community. All that you need to do is ask, where can I help? It might be with helping children read at the literacy center, or it might be with donating clothes or food um, and blankets that is still in good condition. Or it might even be to sponsor Christmas box to children this year. And especially with our focus on children who has lost a parent during this whole COVID pandemic. You can make a difference and you can help. As I conclude, my prayer today is that God would grant us open eyes, open minds, open hands and open hearts so that we can continually be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. May God bless us with the right resources along with the spirit of generosity, kindness, humility, compassion, a thankful heart and an everlasting heart for serving God and others. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. All right. Now, the, the, the first question God asks 
man is where are you? Go back and look in Genesis. Uh, where are you? That's the first question God asks man. Where are you? And God still asks that. Where are you? God wants to know where you stand spiritually with him. The first question man asks God, am I my brother's keeper? That selfishness, self-centeredness comes in right at the beginning, just after the fall. Do I really have to care for those around me? Well, again and again in the Bible, God answers yes, yes, yes. And in fact, the only difference between the sheep and the goats that Samuel was talking about is that the goats did nothing. The sheep went out and ministered to people. All right, so social justice matters at New Life. Number 11, Christian doctrines matter at New Life. Doctrine is a, is a belief or a set of beliefs that are taught by a church or uh, an organization or groups. And over the past 2,000 years, we have had uh, constantly, if you read the history of the church, constantly the, the foundations get chipped away There have been false prophets, uh, false church leaders that have undermined and um, sought to lead astray uh, Christians. Um, It's been a problem that the church has had to deal with since the church was first founded in the book of Acts. In Paul's letter to the Ephesian Christians, he writes, he says, we must not allow ourselves to be led astray by novel teachers or by the false doctrines or deceivers or of deceivers who teach clever lies. David in the Psalms says, asks this question, he says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? I want to show you a 30-second clip of what happens when the foundations of a house get eroded. Thanks, guys. Apartment buildings are in danger of falling into the ocean. Pushed away the cliffs, leaving several houses under the beach below. Others had to be torn down. (laughs) When the foundations get eroded, Eventually, the house falls. General Paul, writing to Corporal Timothy, this is the last letter we have of Paul in the New Testament. He's about to be martyred. He says to Timothy, young Timothy, he says, preach the word of God. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching or doctrine. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths and fables. It's very important, folks, that as Jesus followers, we stay grounded, we stay rooted, we stay sound, in sound, solid, biblical, Christian doctrine. When this church stops preaching from the Bible or preaches more from other people's books and not the Bible, get new leaders. Doctrine matters. And we've got, we put together 15 core doctrines that we believe in. Uh, it's, we are part of the Seminars of God Church. There are churches on all five continents. Uh, they've been going for centuries. And um, these are the core doctrines. There are more than 15, but we've just put together 15, uh, we believe, are the more important ones. So they'll be handed out at the door. If you want one, please take one. They, they, are they on the... The net as well? So that on a, on, where, where? A website. Somewhere out there on the cloud or in, in the, on the internet somewhere. Get to the website. They're there too if you don't want to take a paper. Uh, but, but take it home. We need, to, we need to know what we stand for, what we believe in. 
For instance, we do believe in Holy Communion. And uh, we're going to, before we go home this morning, we're going to break bread. And then the last one, we believe in the local church. We believe that the local church matters. It matters. Remember years ago, we used to show you this a couple of times, long ago. Maybe you remember. Thanks, guys. Here we go. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Yeah. Um... We, <laughs> local church matters. Um, there are, as, as they say, there, there are other churches in the town as well that love Jesus, that follow Jesus, that serve Jesus. We're not the only church in Mossel Bay. Um, but we are passionate about the local church. So if you, if you say, if you believe God is leading you to relocate to another country, I mean to another city or town or place, Firstly, check that as God. Because, number one, why on earth would you want to leave Mossel Bay? It could be the devil that doesn't want you living, yeah? <laughs> but wherever, if it is God and he relocates you somewhere, priority number one, find a local church. Very, very important. We believe that the local church is the hope of the world. We believe that God does nothing of significance outside of the local church. We believe that the local church is God's vehicle of blessing into every community. And we believe that when the local church is working right, there's nothing like the local church when it's working right. So, let me conclude. We're building a church here with Jesus, with Jesus, for Jesus. We're building a church where the lost can come and hear the gospel, the good news being preached, the good news of God's love, of God's mercy, God's forgiveness, God's compassion being preached, not watered down. We're building a church where the word of God can uplift people to live a life worth living. We're building a church where the hurting and the broken can come and be restored, find restoration in Jesus and wholeness. We're building a church where no matter what culture, young, old, rich, poor, can come and feel accepted, feel loved, And feel welcome. And I want to invite you, I want to encourage you. If you're not part of a local church yet, join us as we together build a church that is going to bring glory to Jesus in Mossel Bay and pleasure to the heart of the Father. Our values matter of life, of, of love, of integrity, of faithfulness, and of excellence. Social justice matters. Christian doctrine matters. The local church matters. 
Amen. Can I ask you to stand? I want to ask God to seal this in our hearts. Father God, from, from faith down to the local church, all these things matter to us, Father God, because we believe they matter to you. Help us, Lord God, to be faithful to our promises to you, to our promises to our, fa- our families, our spouses, faithful to the church. Help us to know what we believe in. Father, help us to live as true, genuine, authentic, sincere believers. Forgive us for being hypocrites when we were or when we are. Forgive us. Help us to shine the light, Father God, as you would have us to. In Jesus' holy name we ask. Amen.